know that Park City was the second most lucrative silver mine in U.S. history? Those days are long ago, but what remained were the paths built for the extraction. Those rudimentary roads were the beginnings of a trail system that adorned the hills of Park City today. And from silver to gold, the leaders in Park City have reinvented the economy through sheer love of the sport of mountain biking. Thirty miles east and 2,500 feet above Salt Lake City, Utah, the town of Park City, Utah hosts a network of trails that brings outdoor enthusiasts throughout the year and from around the world. Originally named Parley's Park City, after the area's earliest European settler, a Mormon man named Parley Pratt, the locals soon dropped the Parley from the name and found silver in them their hills. And when the mines came, the first mountain trails were built. You know, the trail system here in Park City uh, didn't exist in the late 80s, uh, early 90s. Uh, a lot of the mountain biking we were doing or a lot of trail running was basically on old uh, mining uh, trails that uh, the uh, miners used to get up to the, tr up to the mines. Um, there's probably 12, 14 miles of banded trails on private land. Uh, everything in the Park City area is basically on private land. There's a wonderful public-private partnership that's been developed in Park City. And because of the myriad of agreements put in place when new developments are planned, Park City has become one of the world's greatest places to mountain bike. In 2011, the International Mountain Bicycling Association, or IMBA, named Park City, Utah as the world's first gold-level mountain biking town. Technically, the trail system is a non-motorized, multi-use trail system. So it's equestrian, it's runners, bikers, hikers, basically things without motors. Anyone who's pounded their pedals, crisscrossing Round Valley or gathered the kids and the dog and cruised the rail trail does not need National Geographic to tell you it's in the top 20 mountain biking communities in the country. Anyone who's taken the lift to the canyons daring downhill or Deer Valley's famous tidal wave certainly does not need Outside Magazine to tell you it's the best town ever. The catalyst for that change um, and legitimizing the trail system probably one was the mountain bike industry was growing rapidly in the late 80s to all of a sudden a deer valley did a very bold thing they actually started lift serve uh, mountain biking and to do lift serve mountain biking they actually had to build some trails It's estimated that in 2016, there were one and a half million user days on Park City trails, but it took a while to get there. Mountain trails actually got started in the fall of 1992, and uh, all those things kind of started to come together. There was also a significant law passed in uh, about 1991, 92, uh, in Utah that was uh, it's called the Utah Landowners Act. Um, and basically it protected the landowner from opening his lands to public use. With the law settled, the community definitely came together in many ways to cooperate on the long-term plan. At first, people were kind of like, and especially developers, said, why, why do I have to build a trail? But as these trails got built and, uh, and they started to connect communities, uh, it, it became really noticeable that it was a really good thing and now, nowadays everyone wants to put a trail in. Since 2011, when Park City became the first gold-level mountain biking town in the world, there have been other designations in other towns. Boise Eagle, Idaho, Oak Ridge, Oregon, Twin Cities, Minnesota, Cuyuna Lakes, Minnesota, and Nelson, New Zealand. There is not just one thing that makes Park City so good for riding. 
However, the number of trails and the amount of riding you can do without retreading any miles is remarkable. By most estimates, there are around 400 miles of connected single track in and around Park City. So when they took a look at the uh, gold level um, application, it had everything from uh, beginning train parks for kids, what type of programs were in town, like young riders, uh, did the buses have uh, racks on them so you could get around, and did the hotels actually welcome bikers, you know, have storage spaces for them, uh, hoses to clean their bikes at the end of the day, work stands. It's also about how well the trails are maintained. The Mountain Trails Foundation crew, as well as crews from Deer Valley, Summit County, and Park City, are responsible for clearing trails and cutting any encroaching vegetation. With 400 miles to maintain, and only six months of the year to do it, the task is Herculean. It's often said that Utah has two seasons, winter season and construction season. This truism relates to the trail building and maintenance business as well. We have here about a 24 week building season in uh, this elevation, and we put out a, a six man crew uh, typically uh, for about that 24 weeks. Uh, and we also have, even when we're building, like we're actually up here building today up in uh, Shadow Lake, uh, we also will be running part of our crew, will be doing the other jobs in town that need to be uh, taken care of. So right now, the foliage is uh, crossing over the trails, so we're starting to cut everything back again. Originally, the biking trails in Park City were all advanced and very technically and physically challenging. But Charlie and some other devoted locals saw the potential for expanding the commerce in Park City by making more family-friendly beginner trails. And although it costs about five to $15,000 per mile to build new trails, the miles increase each and every year, and payback is tenfold. The city currently brings in a yearly average of $529,800,000 to the Utah economy. At this point, I think we'd have to uh, use that uh, cliche from the commercials, uh, the trail system is priceless. Um, if you look at it from an economic basis, uh, especially for the community, uh, and you hear some moaning and groaning about it in Park City, is we don't have a slow season anymore. As bike technology has improved and as the sport has grown, so too is the creativity of the artists creating these trails. The pace and the flow of these serpentine paths is a play that's plot is slowly revealed to the explorer by an author whose name may never be known. And as the tools and the equipment for the trail building have improved, so too has the trail design, making the trails more eco-friendly and non-invasive. I have a phrase I like to use that uh, instead of thinking of user days, sometimes I think of uh, all those people out running around as basically uh, having a positive lifestyle choice. Uh, so I usually think that we actually provide what I call PLFs, positive lifestyle choices, and those choices are incredibly healthy. They're going to make people la live longer, be happier, enjoy themselves. Uh, you can't go wrong with getting outdoors. Which brings us back to the trailhead of this story, from silver to gold. The lessons for other communities can be found not just in how these trails were built, but why. There are other places around Utah and the West that can benefit from the example set by Park City. There is a future for the economics of recreation, and the economics of extraction are in the past. Most of us believe that the recreational component to Utah is part of the largest industry in, in Utah. Uh, that mining and uh, so forth, the extraction uh, side of life is really short short term, you know, we can recreate for as long as we like, right? That's it for this week's adventure.
We hope you can get out and experience some of the trail systems in Park City and understand why it's rated highest in the entire planet for mountain biking. And we hope you are encouraged to adopt a pet from a shelter. Please do not support breeders. To find out how to adopt one of the animals featured in today's program, go to nuzzlesandco.org. And if you want to see some more behind the scenes stories, visit our Facebook page or online at utopiatvseries.com. And remember, we don't inherit the earth from our parents, we borrow it from our children. <laughs>